That's a little better. You can feel the love in here right now, Hilda. Feeling the love. Emma Lagasse here. I got a question for you guys. What uh, vegetable did C Christopher Columbus like so much that he brought it all the way back to him to Spain? Peppers. 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 <laughs> oh, I see we got some historians in the building, huh? You're right, bell peppers. Bell peppers. So, I, th I figured, you know, in honor of this historical vegetable, I thought I'd make a swirl of roasted yellow and red pepper soup with shrimp dumplings, if that's okay. Maybe you're craving some eggplant and oyster stuffed peppers, huh? Some Creole sauce. And then, we're just gonna blow the roof off. Tempura bell peppers with a crab salad. How's that? Does that sound all right? everybody, because it's the best of bell peppers right here on Emerald Live. Yost, how you doing? Saxon? Hello. See these uh, books that you uh, have in front of you here by these gentlemen here? Got them, uh, invited them on. They're going to do us a little, uh, show us some little vegetable carvings and things later on. And uh, Doc Gibbs and Cliff, everybody in the house. What's up, man? How you doing, babe? All right. All right. What's happening, Cliff? Glad to be here. You all right? Yeah. Yeah. How's everybody doing? Good. Doing all right? Mm -hmm. Did you guys look through this? Yes, we did. This is Yost and Saxton right here. How are you peeling? Foods with moods. Did you check that out? Grateful. It's unbelievable. Look at these faces. Well, we're going to find out later from those guys what they look for when they shop for, uh, for fruits and vegetables. Pretty cool. And then this one here, I already had this one right here. Play, play with your food. My kind of book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you. Anyhow, we're delighted to have them. Bell peppers. We, um, you know, there are many, many different types. And all different cuisines, all different cultures use them. Look at these here. These are the, the Cuban version of the peppers right here. Pepperoncinis, a lot of the Italian cuisine. And uh, what a lot of people don't realize, bell peppers, always, they all start green. It's basically how they ripen. As they begin to ripen by the sun is really what changes the color. They go from an orange, they go to yellow, they go into red, and they could have those as well. Very sweet, and what I'm excited about, huge ingredient, huge ingredient in Creole cooking. Well, really a lot of the Mediterranean cooking, but definitely Creole cooking because bell pepper, big part of the trinity. When we come back, I'm going to show you how to start roasted red and yellow pepper soup. Stick around. We'll be right back. Doc Gibbs. everybody yeah. 
Welcome back, everybody. Bell peppers, that's on the menu tonight. Couple of special guests. I'm going to get right into it now. Now I'm getting excited. It's this whole cooking, food of love thing. Now, a lot of people do different things with peppers. And roasting them is sweeter. Bell peppers already uh, tend to be sweet. Uh, probably the mildest pepper in the whole family of them. Now, I tell people how to you roast these. There's a lot of different ways that you can do this. The uh, simplest way is to just take them, rub a little olive oil, a little salt and pepper, whole like this, and basically you can just roast them in the oven on a little sheet pan like this. If you don't want to do that and don't want to use the oven, you can do them outside on the grill. You can do them indoor on the grill. It doesn't have to be electric. doesn't have to be gas. Example being, if this was an electric burner, you just turn your burner on and begin to start blistering your peppers. You don't really even have to add a little bit of oil. I got a little grill here. You can do them like that. Or you turn the flame on and take your pepper. Well, what's going to happen is this. A lot of these bell peppers, they have this very, very wax skin on them, a very tough skin. So when you, what you want to roast them for is not only for flavor, but also to eliminate some of that tough skin. Makes them more tender. And then you can uh, use them in antipastos. You can use them for dressings. You could use roasted pepper to make a dressing. And what we're going to do is once we roast these, you can see, see what it's doing right there now? It's blistering. It's going to start cracking that. And as I said earlier, you can also do them inside of the oven. Now, the other thing about peppers is this. Beside roasting them, one of the things about once you're done roasting them is to take that skin off. One way of doing it is you can just put them in a brown sack, kind of fold over the sack. The steam from that will basically help eliminate some of the skin. Running it out under water can work as well. I generally just put, cover it with plastic wrap. Let the steam kind of do that, then you can peel them away. Once you got them all roasted, there are things that you can do. You got to clean them up. The easiest way that I tell people to clean them is just to take a little bit of that top of the pepper off, and then the big skin seed part of it is done. Try not to waste a lot of the pepper. And then basically now, they're ready for what you want. They're ready to stuff. We can stuff them all kinds of ways, or they're ready to work with. I try not to waste any of the pepper. Generally what I'm going to do if I'm going to cut the pepper, I cut it in four pots like this. This part of the pepper right here is where all the flavor is inside of that. So you're going to eliminate some of that. And then generally, depending if you're going to dice them, I generally just cut them in little strips like this. That would be a julienne of a pepper. Or if I'm going to use them in soups or whatever, perhaps maybe I want a little dice of pepper, so and I just use a little dice like this or a little brunoise. So now, I roasted these peppers just like I'm doing here and uh, took the skin off. And now basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start with the red peppers I have right here. I roasted, these are about five or six peppers, took the skin off, I just chopped them up. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start my first soup. I'm gonna take a little olive oil in a little sauce pot like this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start sauteing, real simple, some onion, a little bit of celery a little bit of carrot. The reason why I'm doing the carrot is because not only for color, but I'm just going to get a little bit more sweetness from the carrot as well. Same thing when I make pea soup. I put carrot inside of my pea soup so it sort of sweetens it up a little bit. Then we're going to season this. A little bit of salt, fresh ground pepper, and then what I'm going to use 
Once I cook this for about six minutes, it starts getting tender. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my peppers after six minutes that have been cleaned and roasted. Okay? I'm going to add a few cloves of garlic in there. Oh, yeah. Man. A few cloves of garlic. And then what I'm going to use for this, for the red pepper, this is the roasted red pepper, I'm going to use chicken stock. Now, or chicken broth. Just a little bit to cover it. I'm going to bring it up to a boil, and we're going to let this just sort of simmer, okay? Takes no time. The peppers have already been roasted, so the soup itself is really only going to take about 30 minutes. And you can roast the peppers ahead of time, okay? If I wanted to make this vegetarian, I would just use regular water or a vegetable stock. If you're going to do that, just make sure that you adjust the seasoning. A little more salt, a little more pepper. Unless where you live, of course, your, you know, your uh, local water may be seasoned. I don't know. <laughs> now, same thing what I'm going to do. I'm going to start again. A little olive oil in a sauce pot. Same process. Get the heat on high. I've got onion, celery, and carrot. Got a little bit of garlic, except I'm going to do it with yellow pepper. And I'm going to make a yellow pepper one. Same process. Saute the vegetables six minutes or so. Going to add the pepper. Chicken stock. You want a vegetarian, you know the whole game. When we come back, I'm going to show you not only how we're going to finish our soups, but shrimp dumplings. Stick around. We'll be right back. That's it. one of those whatever you were getting we were just over here rocking out with Doc Gibbs and Cliff and uh, basically you can see here see we really cook here they don't have no idea you know like. so we got this uh, up to a, a little simmer not right now actually a good boil what you want to do when it starts that you want to taste and see where your seasonings at a little more salt a little more pepper it's one of them common scent kind of things you know so we'll add a little bit more like that. You know, you want more pepper, you want to kick it up a few notches, you know. Add a little of that. And we're going to let this, we're going to turn it down now. And we're going to let it start simmering and cooking. Now, same thing with the yellow. Little taste. It's like, oh yeah, it's enough salt. Or, hey, I need more salt. <laughs> Gonna let that simmer now. You know, the reason why we got the lid on them, <clears throat> we're trying to control the condensation level. Because people never really think about why. You know, they, they, it's like they bring home this cookware and they go, oh, I only got seven pieces. Three of them were lids. <laughs> well, you know, you gotta have lids. This is like a control thing right now. You know, it's like we got the lid on things. So we can control the evaporation and the condensation. We don't want it all to go out there. We're not trying to get yellow pepper vapors all over New York City right now. So we got the lid on it. All right. Now, I said earlier about the proper way, or at least what I like to do is when your peppers are all nice and roasted and blistered like this, Generally what I do is I take them and put them inside of a little bowl like this. And then what I do is I just take some plastic, cover them up, okay? And that's what basically they'll start steaming and they'll be easy to peel like that, all right? Now, once we finish this red pepper soup and yellow pepper soup, I may cream one of them, I may not. 
Try it sometime. Get your own show. Do what you want. <laughs> but what I am going to do is I know I want to have little dumplings. I want to float some dumplings in this soup. So what I did is I got some shrimp. I got a little cilantro in there, some onion. Hey, if you want celery, whatever you want. I got onion, a little cilantro. Going to season them up, a little salt. some pepper. Then what I'm going to do is this. I'm just going to kind of let it puree a little bit. Now what I like to use to bind this, sometimes you just put like a little egg or an egg yolk or an egg white in here and it kind of binds it all together. Okay? That's it. It ain't rocket science. Dumplings, you know? <laughs> then what you do, you go to the store and you can get in different sizes, these sort of wonton wrappers. I'm not making it up. They're in the grocery store. They come bigger, smaller. Well, it's a soup, so I'm just going to do, what I'm going to do is this. I take a couple of them like this. Make sure you split it apart. You can do this ahead of time, too. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take some of that shrimp filling that we had. We're just going to Put a little bit of filling like this. And then what you do is you take a little bit of water. You just kind of moisten the wrapper like this. This is what I'm doing here, moisten it. And then you fold these over like this. And then you got a perfect little dumpling. You see that? Hey, you know, if you want to fry them, you can fry them. You can use them for hors d'oeuvres. You can just make dumplings. Put them inside of the chicken broth. You can get as fancy as you want like this. If you want to turn them, you can do like all kinds of things like this. Okay? Then, very simple. Look. Over like that. So now I've got the dumplings. We're going to make a bunch of these. Make them ahead of time. Just keep them right inside the refrigerator. Be perfect. You can even make these the day ahead of time. All right. So now there's the dumplings. As fancy as you want to get like this, okay? You want to make them round, make them round, knock yourself out. Now, you guys doing all right? I got to tell you, this is like a perfect show. When uh, Saxton and Yaus, with their books, how do you guys, I, I got one question for you guys. I, you guys, when you go shopping for vegetables or for fruits, what are you really looking for? Well, you're looking for faces. We look for faces. And peppers have great noses to start with. Here, for instance, a face is a mouth. And we stick then two eyes in there to show how it works. Right. And what's the eyes? Are, those are that's black, eyed black eyed peas? Black eyed peas. But so you, they're like southern peppers now. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yes. But yes. once you once you finish looking at the yeah. top, and if you're lucky enough to find a mouth, sometimes there's there's some more more interesting things start happening on the bottom, and you can start finding all kinds of wonderful faces on the bottom of the pepper. That's very cool. You know, when I was I was looking through this, I actually had this book before, mm -hmm. really and truly, and I and I enjoy it. It's I mean amazing, and we've got a bunch of stuff in the. I was particularly impressed with the pumpkin action. Hey, you know, these guys are nice guys, you know. You see all these books in front of you, folks. You get to bring them home, you know what I mean? These guys are... Thank you. So, Saxon, like you just... Saxon, you just showed me this bell pepper right here. This right. is another one. Are, are you peeling? Right. But, uh... So when you guys are through the store, I mean, do people like look at you funny because you're like looking for like unusual shape? Yes. Pe people usually, and we usually shop in volume, so people usually say, what are you, what are you going to do with all those peppers? Um, <laughs> Why do we need 60 of them? I love it. But in New York City, actually, people don't ask as often as they do elsewhere. <laughs> see, it's a New York thing. You see, I, I wasn't going there, you know. <laughs> well, we're delighted to have you. 
So look, you know, you may not want to do that in Wisconsin or in Canada or anything like that. Come to New York when you want to buy some strange vegetables, you know? All right, here's what we're going to do. Check this out. The dumplings. Yellow pepper soup, red pepper soup. Shrimp dumplings. I figured, hey, kick it up one more notch, you know what I mean? What I'm going to do is I'm going to take some red onion and a little julienne of yellow and red peppers, season it with salt and pepper, okay? We want to cook this till they're tender. I'm going to have a little carrot and this stuff right here, Napa cabbage. You guys make faces with this? Yes, we yeah, we've done cabbage. We have a little dog. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Once the peppers... Ah, uh, this is a tricky. It's cut in half. It's only half of a cat. Yeah. Yeah. It's a half, half. It's a half a face. Yes. All right, we'll get you the other half. I'm sorry. When we come back, I'm going to show you how to put this all together. And then it's eggplant and oyster stuffed peppers. Stick around. Not good. You guys having a good time so far? Yeah. All right. All right, what I wanted to show you now, we're going to finish this soup. We got our dumplings made. While we're on the commercial, what I did is I uh, took the boat motor out. You know the boat motor. <laughs> pureed. I pureed the red one. Now, this is when you can ask yourself, self! Yeah. It's like, look, if the texture bothers you, strain it. Classically, most people would strain it. Hey, whatever knocks you out. You want to strain it? Great, strain it. I'm not straining it. I like, kind of like the texture like that. It's like rustic. But what you want to do is you got to taste it. Make sure, again, if you got to re-season it. Huh. <laughs> Sometimes you just amaze yourself. <laughs> so, this is where you make the adjustment. Sometimes with certain vegetables, a little acidity will bring the level of flavor up. It's like the reverse if you're making red sauce. Sometimes you have to add a little sugar to decrease the acidity in the tomatoes. There are certain vegetables like peppers being one, you may want to elevate the acidity. Okay? In which it's very simple to do. What you do, as you ladies know, that's when you fork a lemon. <laughs> right, ladies? It's very simple. You just kind of get your basic fork like this in the lemon. I like to fork it a couple of times. No, because you get more juice that way. See, what you... Forget it. All right. A few drops of the juice, and the level of the acidity will come up, okay, with certain things like that. Now, we have our red one. What I also did with that cabbage, that Napa cabbage, I made a little slaw with some sesame oil and the peppers and some onions. Now we're going to check the yellow one. After it gets tender like that, you get the boat motor again. <laughs> What's going to happen is as it begins to start doing this, you're pureeing it, breaking down all of the peppers. You can use a blender as well. Now, you can begin to totally, completely puree this if you'd like. Earlier I said what I was going to do is I was going to cream one of them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cream actually a little bit the yellow one to make it a little richer. 
Okay, look, I'm just taking a little bit of whipping cream. I don't want to lose all the color, all the flavor, though. That boat motor's getting some heavy-duty work today. Now, when you get it all pureed, again, you can ask yourself, do you want to strain it? Do you like the texture? Generally, let's strain this one. So you're going to get a lot of the pulp. See it catching right there? So what you're really going to get with this one is you're going to get most of the, uh, the flavor, the liquid. And I'm going to show you how easy this is. While this is draining right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our dumplings that we made. 360, 370 degrees. I'm going to fry them. If you don't want to fry them, no big deal. You can poach them. Just like you're going to do pasta. You can poach them if you'd like. But I'm going to fry them. Then, once I get this all strained out, Michelle, I didn't burn you, did I? No. Okay. You missed me. Okay. Now what we're going to do is this, Michelle. See, once we get it all strained like this, it's some straining music by Doc Gibbs. <laughs> now, we're going to taste this. And we're going to see. See, it's much lighter when it's strained. Now what we're going to do is we're going to taste this. Unbelievable. 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 All right. Check this out. Once we get our little dumplings fried like this, turn them over. See how they get nice and golden brown? Now we're ready to put this whole thing together. Watch this. You know, it's good... It's always a good thing, too, to remember, folks. You can always do these soups a day, two days in advance. They only get better at flavor. But when you're ready, this is what I like to do. I take some of that more broth of the yellow. I take some of the broth like this of the yellow pepper soup. Nice flavor, really light. Then, take our dumplings, strain them out. Good thing I got napkins everywhere. Whenever you're frying it, you always want to season it as soon as it comes out. Then, I'm going to take more of the more rustic yellow and add the red to it like this. So we got two different flavors going on. Looks good, huh? Then, then what we'll do now is we'll take a little bit of that slaw that we made, use this right in here as a little garnish, like a little nest. Okay? Then, take a couple of our dumplings. Just put those dumplings like that. Ah, we'll put another one. Why not? Okay? Maybe a few peanuts for garnish. Maybe a little uh, parsley like that or a little bit of chives. There you go. This is a little soup, all right? I hope you enjoy it. See, I didn't get this... I didn't get to see them they much, that much. They had to come all the way from New Orleans to see me, you know? Enjoy. I love that. Now, what I did with some olive oil is I started sauteing a small dice of eggplant and onions. A little bit of garlic, of course. <laughs> We're going to get that going here. Then... Depending, how you guys doing, all right? Yeah, what you yeah, making now? Well, we have a whole variety of... You got like a whole family right yeah. now. <laughs> Those are great. Yeah, the bottom has a lot of fun. That is great. Mine it looks a lot different than mine. But I promise you when I'm done with this. Stuffed peppers. Love them. 
And, you know, stuffed peppers are one of those things, not only you can stuff them whatever you want, but it's one of those dishes you can do it in the oven. You can put it in a pan and put it outside your grill, covered. There's a lot of versatility with these. One of my favorites happens to be one stuffed with an eggplant and oyster dressing. Love it. So I got the eggplant going right now and the onion, and it's in olive oil. And now what I'm going to do, you see, when you're going to do stuffed peppers, you just kind of cut them like this, pull out the pepper part of it. See? Cleaned up. You're ready to go. If you want a little base, especially like if you don't have these guys, you just cut yourself a little base, and then what you do is now they're ready to stuff. You may only want four, maybe you want six. You can stuff them with all kinds of things. You can do a vegetable stuffing. You can do eggplant and oyster like we're doing. You can do shrimp and merloton. You can do all kinds of different stuffings, your favorite stuffings. You can put sausage in it. All different kinds of things you want to do. Now, this is what I like about these. Once you get the eggplant tender, it takes on this beautiful thing. Then what you're going to do is this. We're going to add some garlic, about 20, 30 cloves. We're going to add a little bit of salt. We're going to come back to that. We're going to add a little bit of salt. And I thought, hey, why not just blow the roof off the joint, right? I got some cayenne pepper to kick it up even a few more notches, right? Then what we're going to do, nice and tender, I'm going to add green onions. And I'm going to start adding breadcrumb to this, OK? Now, once you start adding the breadcrumb, you can always add. Sometimes, hey, you may want to just use soaked bread if you want more bread consistency. What we're going to do now, I don't want to get this too thick, but at the same time, see, you can always add. But once you start adding the breadcrumbs, you've got to turn the heat off. Now, watch this. Starts getting thick like this. You can get one of them small little containers of oysters, right? And I did this purposely because what I wanted to show you is this. Not only are we going to add the oysters in there, but when you buy these oysters, they have this, this is what they, it's, they sit in. They're called, in New Orleans, we call this oyster liqueur. <laughs> I just call it good. Don't throw it out. You want to use that in there. Then we want to add a little bit of cheese too, right? Now, if it starts being too loose like it obviously is right now because of all the oyster liqueur, that's when you can add more breadcrumbs, okay? You see what I'm doing now? All right, now, what we're going to do is we're going to re-season this, going to make sure that all of this comes together. I want it a little wet. You see how it's a little wet like this? Because when we start stuffing them inside of the peppers, I like to top them with more cheese. We're going to add a little water to this, and then we're going to cover this with aluminum foil, and we're going to bake them in a 375-degree de oven. That's what I'm going to do when you go whatever you're going to do. And then after that, another notch. Tempura roasted peppers. Stick around. Back in. Welcome back, everybody. We're kicking it up a few notches. Our great guests here, Saxton and Host, we're uh, delighted to have you again. And I uh, want to welcome you again. Now, you just, what did you just whip up here? A cat. That's a cat. You guys take a look at that, huh? A little cat action. All right. What we're going to do is this. I've made an emulsion. I love it. I made an emulsion with some egg and oil. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this into, this is celery root. Do you guys ever? Have you worked with this? Yes, yes. Beautiful. This is a little celery root for you. Thanks. What I did is I peeled 
some a small yeah, celery root and I diced it up. And then I'm going to add the juice of one lemon, some fresh tarragon, a little bit of fresh tarragon, a little mustard, a little onion. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to make this a little celery root remoulade. Okay? Once you're done with this, we're going to keep this inside of the ice box. Then what we're going to do, season it with salt and pepper, what we're going to do is we're going to serve that later on. While the peppers are in the oven, also with bell peppers, I made a Creole sauce. Bell pepper, onions, little celery, sauteed them for about six minutes, a couple of tomatoes, chop, chop, salt, cayenne. There's where we are right here. A little bit of water. You could use chicken stock. You can make this as hot as you want. That's going to be the sauce for those peppers when they're done, okay? Which are right here, inside there, covered up. Earlier, when I roasted some peppers on the sheet pan, this is what they look like when they come out of the oven. See, you let them rest. See, the stem will come right out of there. You see that with the seeds? And then you can slowly just start peeling them back, taking the skin off of them. That's the more traditional way of roasting them. Now, when you roast them and they're cooled down, this is what I did right here with those red peppers. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these strips big pieces however you want and we're going to tempura fry them then what I'm going to do is make a fresh crab salad with that celery root mayonnaise where do you see this tempura batter we're going to use flour cornstarch two eggs and then what we're going to do is we're going to take and make our batter with salsa water okay works perfect. You can use club soda too. You add a little bit at a time. What happens is that the bubbles, the apervescent in here, makes this a fantastic batter. Now watch what we're going to do. See the batter that we got right here? You should let this sit for a little bit. You don't want to have it too thin. But you want to have it too thick either. See what the bubbles it's doing right like that? Then you season this with salt and pepper. And then the great thing about this is that you take this after it settles down. You take your peppers like this. You see that? And then what happens is you fry them. You tempura fry your peppers like that. That's what I'm going to do right now is tempura fry these peppers. And then I'm going to show you how to finish our dish. Stick around. We'll be right back. Back in. We are back. All right, what you want to do is you want to make sure as soon as you take those tempura fried sweet peppers out of there that you season them. Then I'm going to show you now the two dishes. One being here. The longer you can cook these, the better they'll be. You see what I did with the water? Look good, huh? So what we do now is we take some of that Creole sauce right on the bottom like that and then you take one or two of those peppers there we go just like that all right guys all right there's that Bam! watch this I got the remoulade with the celery root right beautiful crab meat I had it on ice. Take the crab meat. Then what you do, season it. Because I don't know where you get your crab or I get mine. Don't come season. <laughs> Salt and pepper. And then as moist and as much as you want of this remoulade on the crab meat. But don't go busting it all around in there. Be easy with it. That's why you paid all that money for those lumps. So you just toss it really light like this. You see that? If you want it super wet, fine. When you're ready, I take a little radicchio like this on the bottom, on the sides. Love that. 
Then I take the crab meat right in the center like that. Doesn't that look good? And then I got the tempura fried red peppers. And you can just kind of put them around like that. Try one of those. Okay. <laughs> and that's how simple it is, folks, okay? Just like that. Little crab salad with sweet peppers. A little tempura. Hey, get a little tempura sweet pepper. Saxon Freeman and Yost Elfers, our special guests. We want to thank them. Hey, what can I say? I'm Emeril Lagasse. Thanks for joining me tonight. See you tomorrow.